Welcome to the Lindsay and Tony podcast, where we talk about spirituality, business, and life experiences. In this podcast, we're bringing our private conversations to you. We believe that it's through discussion, action, and reflection that true change occurs. Welcome to episode 143, The True Meaning of Mediumship. Before I start sharing information about this episode, I want to remind you that my mediumship mentoring starts this week. If you would like to get involved with our group, I have two different groups and it's called Unlock Your Inner Medium, the foundational level, and Unlock Your Inner Medium, the next level. Go to lindsaymarino.com and you can join us. We have just a couple spots left. In this episode, we talk all about our definition of mediumship and the true power of what mediumship can do for your life. We hope you enjoy the show. Hi guys, welcome back. We're so excited that you're here. Today's episode is all about the true meaning of mediumship. And I think before we start, we should just say this is our meaning of mediumship, right? It's the way that we see it, right? Everybody looks at it differently. Yes, this is the way that we see it from our experiences with ourselves, with our clients, and with life. Yes. So when it comes to mediumship, first I think we should say the definition of really what a medium does. And a medium is connecting the two worlds, the spirit realm and the physical world that's here. So the humans that are sitting here on earth, they want to connect in with their past loved ones and a medium is receiving messages from those past loved ones and bringing them to the people that are living here on earth. That's the simplest way I can put it, right? Right. So when it comes to mediumship, we've kind of had our own experiences when it comes to mediumship. And I think the main thing is, is we always know that it's connected with love. It is because every time I connect in with a past loved one, my vibration starts to raise in the same way as if I'm riding my bike along the water or if I'm doing something else that is really gets me into my flow state that's the best way I can describe it I start to go into this flow state but obviously you know that you're connecting with a past loved one in that state Mm -hmm. the main thing that comes up when it comes to past loved ones is they're they've never died so we think that their physical body isn't here but in actuality yes their physical body isn't here anymore but their soul is still very much alive And I think the biggest fear for most people is the fear of death. And when we can release that fear of death, we can literally start living in a completely different way, in a very fulfilling way, when we don't have that fear of death. Right, I think you hit it right there. And that fear of death, I think it keeps the majority of the population from actually being open to connecting with past loved ones because this there's this mystery around death. It's like some people think, oh, you go to heaven, or other people think that you just nothing after this. So that block right there uh, could stop you from really connecting in with the past loved one. And the way that I look at it, it was like what you were saying, Lindsay, it was like there's two different worlds. And to me, the, the all of it is all the same reality. Yeah. So it's the same way as like, We want to have clear communication between us while we're here or else all hell breaks loose, right? If we're not clear with each other, with whatever relationship you have, whether it's your significant other or your family or whoever it is, well, the same thing goes with people on the other side. They want to have this clear communication. And that's the way that I look at it is it's all one and we're here to communicate clearly. And that's the way that we all grow and increase our level of awareness. It's true. And when you just brought that up, I thought of the idea of because we separate the two worlds, like I do it in my teachings, I say, it, it, I even said in this episode, the physical realm and the spirit realm, but really it is all one. It's just our human mind that's separating it. And it's just a frequency away. So it's like turning the dial on, you know, your radio in the car. You know, you're going to turn the, the dial, you're going to press the preset stations you know you're going to tune into that specific one. So maybe it's intuition, maybe it's the spirit realm, but we can tap into it. And I think that's a big thing that we were speaking about this. We went on a morning walk today and we were talking about really this should be normal, but, um, and we kind of went back and forth about 
the idea of it being normal and then it being special, right? So do you want to share a little bit about what you were saying? Yeah, so it seems like the people that could communicate with past loved ones, th these are the special chosen ones. And it seems like this because it's all relative because like I mentioned earlier, the majority of the population, whether they whether they're connecting with past loved ones or not, they're not open to sharing it. They're you know it's it's very weird. You think of a crazy lady with hair with a crystal ball, or you think of somebody who is from another planet who can do this. And I think that's part of our mission, part of your mission, is to normalize this and to help people realize that we're normal people and normal people are doing this every single day. It's the same way as if you know how to communicate with your significant other or with your family members. We also, I believe, everybody knows internally, we have this instinct to communicate with past loved ones as well. We just have to awaken it and it's a skill. It's just like if you play the piano, if you just start out playing the piano, um, you're probably gonna suck. But if you get lessons, no matter who you are, you can get better at playing the piano. It, right, and one of the things that comes up with that is how bad do you want to play the piano? So that's what I usually say to people because people come to me for mentoring and they're like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I think I'm intuitive, but I don't know if I could ever connect them with past loved ones. Or I've had experiences when I was younger where I felt like I saw someone in my room and then I kind of closed off from it. And one of the things that I always say is, how bad do you want something? You know, if you genuinely want to practice something, whether it's piano, soccer, or basketball, whatever it is, mediumship, then you're gonna put in the effort. You're gonna, you're gonna find the teachers, you're going to practice, you're going to get down the techniques, and you're gonna open up to, to do that. And my why with mediumship didn't even start with helping other people. My focus was to connect in with our, with Nick, you know, our mutual person that connected the two of us. I wanted to make sure that he was okay. And from that, from that passion of wanting to make sure he was okay and to communicate with him, it created this ripple effect and it went throughout my life where I wanted to help other people know that their past loved ones didn't actually die. You know? right. And you may not even know how bad you really want to com communicate with a past loved one until you experience it. Until you experience that connection, you're like, oh my gosh, my heart is yeah. bursting open. It reminds me of at one of your mediumship uh, platforms, mm -hmm. there was this guy in the back. Oh, yeah. And I, I watched him walk in and every time I go to these events, I could tell the people that their wife had to drag them there or their friend had to drag them there. He was one of those people and he had tattoos all over him, he was a bigger guy and he, he didn't look like the type of person that would be into this kind of stuff and come to fight. Stereotypical person. Stereotypical, right? And it was my instincts too. My intuition was telling yeah. me this too. It wasn't just how he looked. It proved to be right because I talked to him at the end of the at the end of Lindsay doing these readings. And what happened at the end of it, the very last reading, Lindsay ended up giving this guy a reading, and she gave him undeniable evidence. The entire energy shifted inside the this room of I believe it was around fifty people. And you could just feel the love. You could feel the presence of the past loved ones there. And that evidence was undeniable. It was something with his tattoos. And this guy had long jeans on. So he had to pull up his jeans to confirm, yes, look, this tattoo yeah, it was is. With numbers. It was something with numbers. And he's like, whoa, this tattoo. And there was like five other specific things that you said to him. And this guy was, tears start to flow down. And it, you know, I believe that's the most powerful transformation that can happen is when you have somebody who's not open to this and then all of a sudden this undeniable experience happens and it opens up everybody who's witnessing it. Yeah. And, it, and I know that feeling, that feeling of, you know, when I'm doing a reading or when I'm experience something like that someone's giving me a reading, which I don't get many readings anymore. Like I don't really, I don't book readings, but you can feel the presence of the spirit realm and you feel that love and that connection and the undeniable um, way that we know that love doesn't just die when we phys our physical body dies. You know, this is something that continues on and there's proof that they are still very much alive and well and, and happy and fulfilled. And that's what they want us to experience in our life. 
So if one of the biggest fears of humans is death, then maybe opening up to the idea of mediumship will shift something in you and make you want to experience life through a new set of eyes and knowing that you're supported with love from other people from the other side. There's been so many readings that I've done for people that have been really suffering, you know, 30 years, 50 years in their life because someone passed away that they either didn't get to apologize to, that they think they didn't get to apologize to, or there was something horrific that happened when they were here and they can't let go of it. And when they get that one reading, that one message to prove that their loved one is still with them with facts and presence, something shifts in their life and all of a sudden room starts opening up in their heart and everything shifts, the so, things that come into their life. Exactly, that's powerful too right there. So think about this on a practical level here on earth. Think of somebody that you had a grudge with, someone that you really loved and maybe you stopped talking to them for a year or five years or longer. And then all of a sudden you reconnected, you both were able to share your truth and then boom, your heart opened and it felt like a miracle happened. And I believe that's what's happening here every single time with this. And I think that's the message of this podcast episode is to help you realize that even if you're, even if they passed away, you still can share your truth with them and they could share their truth with you and you could connect on that deep level. And that's where all the healing takes place. Exactly, and I find that with this healing of this communication, you're growing the relationship in a different way. And what I've heard from people and I've experienced it myself where relationships get even deeper than they did before. It's at, on a different level, you know? I know with our mutual friends, like, well, your friend, but now he's my friend, Jerry, um, we're always connecting in with him. Um, a lot of the times we practice, and I'm not going to say this might sound crazy anymore on this podcast because people that are listening, you're listening for a reason. So I'm just going to talk to you like we speak. And we already know it sounds crazy, so we don't have to say yeah, that. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't need to because it shouldn't be crazy now. That, no, it shouldn't be crazy. Um, but I include Jerry and Nick and um, my grandparents in my practice sessions with my students. So I'm like, okay, they're gonna, you want to practice tonight? Let's go. So they'll come and I'll feel that they want to come in and be a, a practice past loved one for my students and they work with them. And it's really amazing to feel that when you can feel, oh, he's stepping in right now. Oh, I feel him here. We were just out for coffee the other day. I don't know if we spoke about this yet on the podcast, but we were sitting drinking coffee. Um, I think we were, were we doing a business meeting or just hanging out? I don't remember. Which day was that? This was in Dunedin, when we were in Dunedin, Florida. We were sitting outside that coffee shop and I looked up. Oh yeah, and we, I were saw doing, we were doing a business meeting. Then. Yeah. And I looked up and I saw a balloon and I was just so present in that moment. And I knew that was one sign from Nick. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a balloon floating up. Now to the normal person, they did there's a balloon in the sky. Well, see, as she said that too, if someone nudged me, right when she said the name Nick, boom, I got this nudge on me. So yeah. you can pay attention to different signs like that too. I'm, right. I'm very physical, so I could feel that every single time. Right. So I spotted the balloon, Tony felt the feeling, and then one thing after the other started escalating to the conversation, and, and Tony started to take notes and write down everything that Nick was saying. I was feeling different things that were happening, and then as he was channeling him, I look over, I get nudged to look over, and right in front of me, someone's coming out of their car with a cookie cake, and that's one of his favorite cakes. So um, it was just ongoing, and what's beautiful about it is, is that he was helping us with something. He was kind of talking to us about future things mm -hmm. in our life and moments, and that's just one example of one person that we connect with still. But the thing is, is when you open up to the mediumship realm, you will notice that you're never alone in your life and that's the most beautiful thing. And that's what this is all about, right? This isn't about saying, hey, look how special we are because we can do this. Right. This is a cool skill. This isn't about like bragging about this. This is about making people realize like, look, this is healing. This is love. This is clear communication. This is life. Like you say, hey, I want to live life to the fullest. In our opinion, this is living life to the fullest because you're bringing in all of the realities that exist. And 
I believe there's even more realities that we could tap into that we don't know yeah. now. So it's like we're opening the space up to where we could keep going to level one, level two, level three, and um, increasing our level of awareness. We were both teachers in the public school systems because we had this desire to help people live in this way. Now, did we know that it was going to lead to this kind of work? No, I would have never guessed yeah. that. But we had the desire that we wanted to live life to the fullest and we want to help other people do the same thing. And we realized this is part of the journey from our experience to living life to the fullest. Yes. And I think the big thing is, is to remember that the moment that you choose that you're open to receiving the messages in, in the signs, you're opening up that channel to receive that love. And I think the big misconception is to have fear around when loved ones come through. There's no fear. There's no, they're not trying to scare you. Um, but one thing that you could do too is open up your senses. So you might see, hear, feel, have an inner knowing about the information that comes forward. And you just need to be open to writing it down, take notes, keep it in a notebook so that you can go back to it when different things come up and you build that belief. Mm -hmm. I think practicing really does um, build that belief for you. You need experiences with even other people's past loved ones to confirm what you're receiving sometimes. Mm -hmm. so. And another th last thing to add is that keep in mind you're a human also. We're humans. We still have human emotions. We're not perfect. We still have flaws. We mess up. Just because we're doing this type of work, it doesn't mean that you have to look at yourself like you're a sage or you're like this person on a platform. Once again, yeah. this is normal. From our opinion, from my opinion, everybody can do this. This just has to do with building your skills, increasing your level of awareness, and educating yourself. Exactly. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this episode. Share with us in the comments any insights that you received from this episode, and we will see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. If you liked it, leave a five-star review on iTunes. And remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel too. If you can think of anyone else that would love this episode, share it with them right now on social media or email. And remember, getting results is a process of learning, applying, and reflecting. Stay consistent and continue to grow every day.